Teaching Lesson 1, Activity 1.1. Observe two strange images and discuss observations. Our learning performance goals. Students will make observations, identify patterns, and ask questions that will guide their investigation of core ideas related to light and its interaction with matter so that humans can see objects. This lesson introduces students to an intriguing phenomenon that is serving as a common anchoring experience for the unit, optical illusions. Students generate original questions that will be organized into a driving questions board to be used throughout this unit. Here's what you have to look forward to this lesson. Activity 1.1, Anchoring Activity, Strange Images. Gather and synthesize information that sensory receptors respond to stimuli by sending messages to the brain for immediate behavior or storage as memories. The disciplinary core idea that will come from this is information processing. Each sense receptor responds to different inputs, electromagnetic, mechanical, chemical, transmitting them as signals that travel along the nerve cells to the brain. The signals are then processed in the brain, resulting in the immediate behaviors or memories. Some science and engineering practice that will take place. Analyzing and interpreting data. Asking questions and defining problems. Obtaining, evaluating, and communicating information. Introduction to the activity. If you need to, go back to the beginning of the video and review the importance in science of making close observations through using the senses, sight, hearing, touch, taste, and smell, and recording observations that they can be referred to later. When scientists and students record their observations, what they record is called data. Recording observations enables scientists or students to refer back to previous experiments. It is important to record observations promptly and accurately so that they can be studied to draw conclusions. If the same data is observed and observations are noted in the same way, scientists and students can compare their data. Guiding activity. Check out these moving circles. What do you see? Take a moment to pause this video and observe the circles. Do the circles seem to be turning? Can you control what happens? Does this mean the circles are actually turning? Check out this next illusion, the checkerboard. Are squares A and B the same shade of gray, or is one darker than the other? Continue into the next images until the entire checkerboard is covered except for these two squares. End again by asking which square is darker. In your notebook, record your observations and ask yourself the following questions. How do you think the turning circle image works? Why do you think one square appears darker than the others even though they are the same colors? For this unit, it is important for you to distinguish when you can believe your eyes and when you cannot. How do you do this? You do this by applying the principles that you have learned about light and seeing. Examples? Light spreads out in straight lines. Light can be scattered, transmitted, or absorbed. In order to convince yourself that what you see is sensible. If what you see cannot be explained by applying the principles that you have learned, then something is tricking you. An optical illusion has fooled you, and you should not believe your eyes. The following paragraphs that I'm about to read to you explain the optical illusions that you will use in Activity 1.1. Checkerboard Illusion When two grayish strips are laid over the checkerboard, the strips merge with squares A and B. We cannot see where one ends and the other begins. When the grayish stripes against the checkerboard merge with the squares so that we can't distinguish between them, then we interpret that they must be exactly the same color. But if square A is exactly the same color of the stripes, and square B is exactly the same color as the stripes, and the stripes have a constant shade of gray, aka they don't change color, then square A must look exactly the same color as square B. This is what is dictated by the logic of what we've learned. Since square A doesn't look exactly the same shade as gray as square B, this means that something additional must be going on. We're being tricked somehow. Our minds for some reason are not interpreting correctly the image that is reaching our eyes, so we know that the checkerboard is an illusion and not something real. Our visual system is more than just a light sensor. If it were, the two squares would appear identical. For example, a white surface may appear darker than a gray surface if the white surface is in a shadow while the gray surface is in full light. 
Our minds have learned this and, there, and can therefore compensate by telling us that the white surface is brighter than the gray surface, even though less light is reaching our eyes from the white surface. Notice that square B looks like in a shadow. It's not really in a shadow. The drawing was made so that it appears as if it is in a shadow. Our minds automatically assume that everything in the shadow is actually a bit brighter than how we perceive it to be. Thus, square B is interpreted as brighter than it really is. The trick in this illusion was to make us think that the green cylinder is casting a shadow, when there actually is no shadow. It's a drawing of a shadow. Moving Circles Illusion How do you know it's an illusion? One thought students often have is that the computer image is actually dynamic and that the circles are spinning. There are a few ways to test this. One, print the image on paper. There, it is definitely fixed and nothing can rotate. If it still seems to move, it's an illusion. Two, are there any colorblind students in class? Colorblind students may not be able to see anything moving. Three, only focus on the uppermost right section of the image. Focus on one spot and don't move either your eyes or your head. You'll notice that the spinning slows and stops, but as soon as you move your eyes, it begins again. To explain, every color has a complementary color. When you stare at an object of a single color for a while and then look at a white surface, an image of the object in its complementary color appears, the after image. Yellow and blue are complementary colors. This is a result of fatigue of the cones in the cells of the retina responsible for sensing different colors. While complementary colors are highly contrasted to each other, at first, at first glance, the brain often has difficulty distinguishing between them. Thus, when the eyes move, it is difficult for the brain to distinguish between some of the blue and yellow spots. So some blue ones seem yellow, and some yellow ones seem blue. And then the switches. It makes it seem like the circles are spinning. If the circles are actually spinning, a blue spot would become yellow, then blue, then yellow. When we fix our eyes on a given spot, our brains get used to distinguishing between the yellow and blue areas, so we no longer perceive the circles as spinning. At this point, I would like for you to pause the video and get out your blue notebook that we passed out either in class or you picked up in the front of the school. Open up to page 4, lesson 1, reading 1. Look at this. Getting ready. The picture shows two bent rectangles. Which bent rectangle is longer? Now use a ruler to measure the size of the two bent rectangles. Were you correct? To most people, B looks longer than A. When you measured, you might have learned that your guess was wrong. In reading this, you will learn how your brain can get confused by what your eyes see. You will be able to compare the figures in this reading to what you saw in class. To compare means to think about what is alike and what is different. As you read, think about what is similar and different about the optical illusions you saw in class and the pictures in this reading. What are optical illusions? Look at the picture in your notebook. Stare at the small dot in the center of the circles. Now move that picture closer to you while you keep looking at the dot. What happens? Tricks like these are called optical illusions. Optical is a word related to your sense of sight. Many other words start with the prefix OPT. An optometrist is an eye doctor. If you need glasses, an optician may help you choose your glasses. You may have seen magicians who perform illusions. Magicians do not really make things disappear, but they do know how to fool your brain so you think things disappear. Optical illusions can be fun because they fool you. Optical illusions are a kind of trick. Your eyes play an important role in seeing, but your eyes and your brain work together. Your brain is the organ that makes sense of what you see. In the picture in the getting ready section, your eyes see two identical bent rectangles. Your eyes see the right thing, but your brain interprets it incorrectly. When your brain gets it wrong, this is called an illusion. Optical illusions and magician's tricks are not real. Your brain is just fooled. Here's another optical illusion. Look at these small dark squares. If you look closely for a few seconds, you will see gray circles in between the squares. Are the gray circles really there, or do they just seem to be there? This is another example of an illusion. 
Your brain is being fooled again. Can you figure this out? Here is one more interesting image. Look at the lines separating the rows of black and white squares. Do you think what you are seeing is an illusion? Are the lines actually parallel and your brain is being fooled, or are the lines really at angles? Were the images in class optical illusions? In class today, you have seen some strange images. The first looked like a bunch of spinning circles. The second image looked like a checkerboard with a square marked A clearly being darker than another square marked B. Finally, your teacher has added some black rectangles to the second image and it became apparent that squares A and B actually had identical darkness. These images succeeded in fooling your brain. They were illusions. You observed a real phenomenon. What you saw depending on how your brain interprets parts of the image. A phenomenon is an event that happens in the real world and that occurs over and over again. Sometimes you can observe things that appear very strange but are actually real. Hold the tips of your thumb and your index finger next to each other so that they are just about touching. Hold them up so that they are next to your eye and look between them at a bright white background. You should just barely feel your thumb touching your finger. You should see one or more small black lines between your fingers. From where did these lines come? This is a real thing you are seeing, not an illusion. Your brain is not getting anything wrong. The goal in this unit is to figure out what happens to make people see things, whether they are real or illusions. Investigating phenomena will help you learn the, how light affects what you see. In science class, you will observe different phenomena almost every day. By the end of the unit, you may be able to explain two optical illusions you saw in class. Making observations. An important part of science is making observations. An observation is the act of paying careful attention to events that happen in the world. This is what you did in class today. You paid close attention to what you could see when you looked at the two images. Making good observations, plus learning the science that goes with them, will help you to explain things that happen around you. What questions do you have? List questions you have about light, seeing, or about the two images from class now that you have finished reading on page 6 of your notebook. Why is light important? You already know that light helps you see, but did you know that if you understand the behavior of light, you can also understand how cell phones in a microwave oven works? The scientific idea that explain the behavior of light also explain how computers, televisions, satellites, GPS, and many other systems work. In fact, Many scientific discoveries from the last 100 years are based on the same principles that explain the behavior of light. You will not study all of these in class, but you will learn about many of them. You might also decide to investigate other uses of light on your own. You may be surprised to learn that light plays an important role in just about everything around you.